Welcome to Pert 15 of Scotland's Ain Kingly Houses. In this Pert, we hear about James the Fort, a king that was forben the nation, but our ready to fecht. House of the Stuart, hod and gone. James the Fort of the Iron Belt, 1488 to 1513. Born on the 17th of March, 1473, he was the elder of two sons, cried James, born to James III and Margaret Audenburg. In they days, it was a common and new custom for a father to hate two or more sons with the same first name. For a long time, James's cough grun was unkent, but his new thoch had been Hallyrood. His brother, James the Younger, was Jicka Ross, but in 1497 became Archbishop of St Andrews and Chancellor of Scotland Sign. There were a third brother, John, that became Earl of Mar. In the summer of 1488, 15 year old James became king after his father was killed in the Sturmash at the Bannockburn Mill. Just 12 weeks after the fecht, James was crowned at Schoon on the 26th of June 1488. Was James Munphy about his part in his father's death? No long after tacking the throne, the kingly callant paid for masses for the soul of his mother, Margaret. But it wasn't until 1497 that he had only said for his father. On the other horn, old Ferniers tells us that James took to wearing an iron belt again his skin to chastify his cell, eking new links whiles. Deed, there ain't mention of the king's iron belt in the Lord Thesurer's accounts in 1507, where it is apparent the belt was happy and worse it, say it wouldn't chaff his skin. As James was a hofflin yet, there had to be nobles appointed to ert his policies. For a while, the Hebern family, along with Archibald Earl of Angus, held the crown of the cosy. In the Parliament held in October 1488, the Heburns and others dung down the old king's friends and pert tackers, say that money mislippin' yin another. It wasn't a muckle wonner that another rising was steered up in the simmer and hearst of 1489. A day, Lord Forbes gaed Ben Aberdeen with the deed king's bloody sark hanging for his spear and calling for the murderers to be fun. He was joined by Alessander Maester of Huntley and they made their way south at the Hedian army. In the west of Scotland, Robert Lord Lyle and John Stuart, Earl of the Lennox, held Dumberton Castle again the Hebron faction. It took twa sharp fechts in the October, Yin at the Moss of Tuch, and another at Gartlone by Eberfile, with 16-year-old James at the heat of the army, to peaceify folk. It was patent till Obdi that there could be no sicker government but with folk belonging the old king's party. So the King's Council was, before 1490, wailed for mang all parties. For the next five years, the King lippin on a wheen nobles, Archibald Earl of Angus, and Willem Elphinstoun, Bishop of Aberdeen, was Ken Speckle. Angus, though, could be a sleek at jail, and in 1490 yen, the King learned Angus had been dealing with England a in his back. But in 1493, the king made him chancellor. Willem Elphinstoun was made keeper of the privy seal and would prove important in the administration of the Kinrick. His etto was for adversity to be found at Aberdeen to bring lair to the ignorant and barbarous folk of the north, as he put it to the pape. And in 1495, got the papal bull he was after. Scotland now had three versities at St Andrews, Glasgow and Aberdeen. Angus and Elphinstoun both had something in common. Both thought that treaties with France was no muckle yes to Scotland and would rather the king made alliance with England. Who are never, at the fore end of the 1490s, James had to tack tent to mere domestic matters, but here he fashed his muckle as he sought to peaceify. The real tickler for James was old mochless John of the Isles, that kidney honno his contumacious kinred on mare. In 1476, John had tinted the Elder Morose and signed the headship of the family. 
John's natural son, Angus, had weird again the king, but was killed in the 1480s. After his death, twa other members of the kindred, Donal Gorham and Alessandra of Lochalsh, loused themselves on the unfriends of the Macdonalds. The king's factors comprehend it. By 1493, Alessandra Lochalsh had been accepted as heed of the kindred with the Council of the Isles, and had licked it on Inverness and Ross. King James kidneth all this, and had Parliament forfeit the Lordship of the Isles to the Croon in 1493, giving old, mockless John a pension. Though in simmer, James led a fleet into Argyll, where he soon found a chill ready to give him the honder he was seeking. John McKeon at Ardnamurachan. The year after, McKeon killed Alessandra Lachalsh. When Sir John McLean at Isla was steered to rise up, through McKeon tacking Pert at Isla, it was McKeon that hunted him down with Jeth at Justice. In the summer of 1494, and again in the wear of 1495, King James sailed into Argyll to daunt in the heads of kin. Macken get yes to his leo McKeon. But where there were a headship in the Heelands Niles afore 1493, knew there were money, and often the king would use lieutenants that had their own ploys or feuds to forder. There were that money fechs and raids that the gales would cry the next hundred and fifty year, the time of spilage. By 1495, Scotland was yin's mere important getting in the hing of poor between France and the Empire. The king's councillors wanted a broad marriage alliance for James. The emperor-elect, Maximilian, was gained uphod till a pretender to the throne of England cried Perkin Warbeck, and King James took Warbeck own for his ain ends. James sent an ambassador to Ferdinand and Isabella of Castile and Aragon, spearing after yin of their dochters. Ferdinand and Isabella was acute to awesome, in the middle of troking with England for a marriage with King Henry, an alliance against the French. Ferdinand and Isabella didn't want Scotland making weir on England for France, but had nae dochter to offer the Scots. They threep it on friendship, but Jalouse they could take a Lena James through hodding his ambassadors back, playing for time till England was strangenuch. But James can't find wheel, and in 1496, broke the pretender Warbeck on a raid into England. In 1497, he led two or three mere raids on siege at Norham Castle with his muckle cannon Mons Meg that was broke down for Embra with a hundred wart men to raid the way. The King of England, with risings at home, could do nothing, and in September 1497, greed a seven-year truce with Scotland. We knew the king was for Ben his folk. He had an interest in money erts and letters, like nae king afore, or at least mere records has one hour to tell, his about, tell us about him. For instance, he was skilly in Leeds. His mother tongue was Scots, but James spoke French, Italians and Spanish, Dutch, German and Latin for by. He is the hen mace king we can spark Gaelic, though who versant he was is another mater. The young king keep it a screed of fancy wives, drawn for among the noble houses, that gied him money bairns. His first fancy was Marion Boyd, niece of Archibald Earl of Angus, and mother of James's son, Alessander, born in 1493. James sent his son Utland for an education, the laddie hen Erasmus for a teacher. In 1504, the king had Alessandre made Archbishop of St Andres, age 11, and Chancellor in 1510, age 17. While Alessandre was a laddie, his father got to administer the income of the Archbishopry. In 1496, Lord Drummond's daughter, Margaret Drummond, became the king's new fancy wife, followed in 1498 by Janet Kennedy. For the noble families that hoard their dochters, there were offices and titles to be had af a king say slokent. The king thought nothing to deval midway through a pilgrimage to visit yin of their women and see till he sell, 
as he did with Janet Kennedy at Dornawa on his way to the shrine of St Duthach at Tain. The king had near wife, but at the Hinneren, after Tim honed at trope with Castile and Aragon, France and other Kenricks, the policy was for peace with England through a marriage. In 1502, the Tor kings agreed a treaty of peace that was meant to Ehod gone, and James was married on the 8th of August 1503 at Hallyrood on Margaret Tudor. Margaret had been born at Westminster on the 29th November 1489, and was the daughter of Henry VII of England and Elizabeth of York. James was aged 30, and Margaret was just 13. James's policies outland comprehended the wars between his uncle, King John of Denmark, and Sweden with the errand merchants of the Tuna Lupke in Germany. The Scots sent two or three ships to the Easter Seas to give King John a Honda in 1502, and in 1505 King James acted as oarsman between King John and Sweden. In 1507, James's ambassador to Lupke broke peace between the Tuna and Denmark. In these same years, James warzled with the problems of his cousin, Cheryl's Duke of Gilder, that was threatened with Castile and the Empire, and put Hendry of England aft joining their poors again Cheryl's. By 1507, the Pope, Julius II, was wanting James on his side in his ploys again France. He kent that James was allied with the French, but wanted to draw him a war, so that he could big up a League of States to drive France out to Italy. Though in year, Julius sent our Antonio in Viziati with a gift of a sword and hat that he had blessed. At a heath mass held in Hallyrood Kirk in April 1507, King James was given the hat and sword afore a gathering of the nobles and Kirkmen. This sword became part to the owners of Scotland, the croon, sceptre and sword, and can be seen to this day in Embra Castle. King James had declared to the Pope his wish to heed a crusade to the Holy Land, and for all the princes of Europe to come together in peace. But their princes was a fascist thrang. Though James had made peace with England in 1502, the twa sides couldn't keep the borders folk for fechting with one another. James threep it on Southern pirates, lichting on and spiling Scots merchants at sea and all. But war, his good father, Henry the Seventh died in 1509, and England's new king, James's good brother Henry the Eighth, was an uncagid eighteen-year-old that declared his ettle to daunt in the French. In 1510, Pope Julius and King Louis XII of France loused their soldiers to blatter in another ding dang. King James now sent Bishop Andrew Foreman over to France and Rome to bring about peace but nobody would, win, would lend a lug. The following year, Julius made a bondy alliance with Spain and Venice that Hendria England joined, hoping that Spain would help him conquest Pert of France. James swithered a good while, but the English king drove Scotland into the arms of France, and a new treaty was made in 1512. The weir calm in August 1513. When England invaded France, James was asked to make a raid on England for to draw her off. See, James left it on the merches of England with a throng of an army. In fact, it is Jalous this was the biggest Scots army that merched on Southern soil, he an intult twelve earls and about twenty lords. James took with him seventeen cannons that wanted four hundred oxen to pull them and siege at Norham, Ettel and Ford castles, tacking o'er them in days. Who and ever, Thomas Earl of Surrey, commander of the Engels army, marched about James, and made to tack up position on the braes of Flodden in Northumberland. This would have put the Engels in the road of James Heden Hame. The king made a bringe on 9th September, sending his ranks of spearmen down hill, but it was wheat and gousty weather, making the grun glabbert. The Scots brack ranks, letting the ingles get in a boot, turning a muckle fecht into a muckle slochter. James fecht in a he gied his orders, 
and for leeting the good grun, took an arrow and sword strikes, and was kilt, fechting like an ordinary soldier. The king's son, Alessander, a bishop, twa abbots, nine earls, fourteen lords, and ten thousand lairds, burgesses and peasants, was kilt along with her king. The bloody, jagged, scuddy book of the king that had the clays and gids riven for it was taken into England for sign it was buried at Richmond in Surrey. And say the ring a King James came rattling down. <laughs>